Good morning. Um, instead of saying okay like I always do, I started with a sip of coffee there. <laughs> so on this rainy day today, I'm going to show you how to, um, or what's called multiple pass animation. And how I'm going to animate five objects, or seven objects here. One, two, three, four, five. I guess I have six objects there. Unless I'm missing one here. Oh, there's another one that comes in from the side. So seven objects. I'm going to show you how to... Uh, Go through and, and animate all the objects so each has have their own uh, motion path. Um, and this is going to be what we call multiple pass animation. So we're, that means we're going to run through the timeline several times and animate these. So when we play back the final video, of course, it will uh, make it look like it's all happening simultaneously. So... Uh, first off, I want to set up my animation. I've already set up a file. I believe it's 720 by 540. So let me check here. If you go to File, Document, Setup. Yeah, it's 720 by 480 here. And the aspect ratio is 3, 2. And for my render resolution, I'm going 1 to 1. And what that means is 1 to 1 simply means... Here, let me hit Escape. Here's my screen when I render it using the main render button over on the left. It's going to render out at the same size as the canvas. So it's a one-to-one -one render resolution. Now I can make that smaller if I want, if I want to speed things up. So if I go up to File again in the upper left-hand corner, Document Setup, I can change that to 1 to 50%, let's say. So if I do that, what's going to happen is when I render it, it's going to render out at 50% of the original size of the canvas. And that's if you want to make a smaller thumbnail type video or just speed the process up. Uh, for now, we'll keep it at one to one. So file, document, setup, one to one resolution. Check that off. Okay, so what we have here are, I have seven objects. There's a block that's off the screen here that I'll show you in a minute. But I have two maracas. Uh, a little, almost like an axle toy for a baby, let's say. A ball, a spinning top, and finally another toy for a baby here. It's some, a big, maybe a plastic toy. And I'm going to make all of these move in their own way um, and create a nice smooth loop. Uh, so before we do that, though, I want to reposition my uh, camera here. So I'm going to use my trackball and my camera controls over here on the left. So I'm going to hit Escape. And now I'm going to use this to uh, maybe scroll out a little bit, go out a little more. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this down, zoom out, again, keep bringing this, tilt it so I'm looking more at it more horizontally, getting closer there. Bring it down, probably about right there, and then zoom out here. Let's see what we can get here. And you can see there's a, also a, uh, a little block up here in the upper left-hand corner. And that's going to fly in and hit the maraca. Then the maraca, in turn, is going to hit the other maraca. This maraca is going to hit the axle toy. This toy is going to hit the ball. It's going to move the ball to this toy, where it's going to hit the top. And the top's going to do one 360 rotation. So it's kind of a cause and effect here, and I'll show you how to use multiple pass animation to make that happen. Let me go up here and uh, let's get a little more air going there. And so maybe about right there. So when we look at it, we're going to see it from this angle. Okay. All right. All right, so starting off, we're going to, again, make the block. Go ahead and hit the uh, maraca here. I didn't mean to move the light here. Okay, and then that in turn will start the chain reaction. So I'm going to start by moving the block over here. Before that, though, I've got to set up my animation. So down here, you can see I have my modeling tools down here. Okay, so I don't need these right now. So I'm going to switch to my animation menu. And this little circle with a grid in the lower right hand corner of Bryce is your palette toggle. I'm going to click that and here are my animation controls. Okay. So let's go up here to file. We're going to go to animation setup 
and we're just going to change the duration okay we're going to i'm going to start with a three second duration so under seconds here where it says duration i'm going to choose three and for frames per second i'm going to change that to 10. so we're going to be animating a total of 30 frames if we're at 10 frames per every second check mark and then you can see your uh, timeline down here you can see your frames here there are 30 of them and they're kind of a greenish color down on the bottom of your timeline here's your scrub key you can grab this to scrub to any portion of your um, animation whenever you want and uh, so now have that going now the only other thing I might want to have turned on is auto key and again auto key is going to be over here where the little just by the uh, palette toggle in the lower right, there's an arrow just up to the left of it. Click that little arrow and turn on auto key if it isn't checked yet. So select auto key. And now what that'll do is it'll make the keyframes before you every time you move your object. So to do this, I'm gonna start from a top view. I'm gonna grab this cube here, this little block, and it's gonna fly off from off the screen into the maraca here so to start this process I need to hit the plus key in the lower right hand corner next to the key so click plus click plus there and the key when it turns golden that means it's recognizing keyframes now so the process simply is this if you have auto key on you move your scrub key let's move it three frames maybe and then you move your object Okay, so I'm going to move this in pretty fast. At three frames, it's going to hit the maraca about right there. Looking at it from a director's view, you can see I'm too high there. So now I'm just going to go to the Edit tab on the top of the screen and use the Y reposition tool and bring it down to where I need it to hit. So it's going to hit the maraca maybe about right there. Let's look at it from a top view again. And then it's going to bounce off and go off screen again. So that's the only object that will go off screen and not return to its original position. So on the third frame, then it's going, let's do maybe uh, two, three more frames, let's say. And let's have this thing bounce kind of up in the air. And maybe it goes back a little bit too even. Let's do that. Let's have it go back this way. Okay, and then we'll move it a couple more frames. Three more, let's say. And we'll have this thing hit the ground or close to it. Maybe right there and then again over a little bit. Okay, and then a couple more frames, maybe two more frames it's going to hit the ground. Uh, maybe up just a little bit. Then a few more frames, three or four more frames, it's going to go off screen. Okay, so it's going to fly out. We're not going to see it after that. Okay, and since auto key is on, I can hit rewind. I can hit the rewind tab and watch it. So now I'm going to hit play and watch boom. There it is. And it's pretty slow, right? Um, so, but you can see that it's working there. Other things we can do is we can do some rotation on it. So let's, uh, again, let's start at the beginning. Click keyframe here. Oops. I'm going to add another keyframe. Now we're going to do some rotation. So by the time it gets to about here, let's say this thing's going to rotate on Z axis. So I'm going to hold down control right on the object itself and rotate this thing going in a forward moving direction about three and a half, four times, okay? Once it hits there, then we can do it again. From there, we can move our uh, scrub key. And notice the curve of how it's moving there. I don't really like how that trajectory is going. So I'm gonna go up here, hold down T, hold down the T key, and adjust this thing, make it more angular. Same with this one here. Go to my keyframe and adjust that. Make that more of a straight angle. So holding down T and then adjusting your uh, keyframe will make it more angular or more smooth and busy and curve-like. 
So I'm going to go to all these key points. They need to be a little more angular. Hold down T once I'm on the point. Let's try that again. And shoot for, there you have a more of an angular kind of, and then I can straighten that out. So now we have these straight angles that might look a little better. So let's cruise through here, boom, and then you can see it head off there. That looks pretty good. I may move this over a little bit, move these over, and move this one over a little bit more too. Okay. And I can speed that up later. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so now let's do some more rotations here. So this is what we call multiple pass animation too. I've already created a motion path, and now I'm going through the timeline again and doing some more animations. So from here to here, I want to see a little more rotation, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do Z again, go on the Z axis here if I can get to it, hold down Control, and keep rotating that maybe one and a half more times. Then it's going to come down here. By the time it gets here, it'll have also rotate it a little bit more on Z. Maybe two more times and then out again, same thing. By the time it gets to here. I'm not sure if I can get to X right there. So I'll go up here, or Z, sorry. So I'll go up here on the rotation on Z and just use the rotation tool right there. So now we've got this thing rotating through the air as if someone threw it, okay? Oops, let me go back here. Okay, so we've got some rotation on it. That's good, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this in case I get a crash. Remember to save frequently. Okay, and this is, I just called this the toy box for now. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, do another pass through our timeline, hence multiple pass, and we're going to make the maraca move. Again, if you have trouble selecting your objects because of other objects around it, hold down control, click on your object, and then choose the maraca. So that's maraca one, because I named, I went into attributes here, and I named all my objects under general. You can name them. Makes life a lot easier. And to do this, I'm going to actually look at it from a side view. Let's say, let's try from right. Perfect. Okay, so from a right view, this thing's going to move toward this other maraca right here. Um, and to do that, I'm going to actually move it a little bit, a little bit away from it. So if we look at it from the top, it won't look like it's going through it so much. There we go. We got a little distance from it now. You can see right there, and if I zoom in, that was almost touching it. So now I've got a little gap there. So it's okay to move your object when you're in auto key as long as you're at the first frame. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Again, I'm going to go from a right view. Okay, and just if you want to check my object there, you can see it's, it's not moving at all. The cube hits it right about there. So to do this, I want to hit hit the uh, plus key by the key on the lower right to add a keyframe. You always want to do that to start. Grab my scrub key on the bottom again and drag that over to about this point right before the cube hits it. And now I'm going to click plus again. Okay, so I'm going to go over to my key in the lower right and click the plus sign again. And what that does is... It keeps your object in that position up to this point. You don't want it to move until about the time that this thing's flying off of it after hitting it. So that extra keyframe makes sure that the maraca doesn't move too early. Okay, so now I'm going to go boom. Once this thing starts rolling off here, maybe about right there, this maraca is going to rotate. Okay, and it looks like I need to maybe switch to object space. So I'm going to go up to these little arrows in the top of the screen. Click on object space. And there you can see now I have my object keys. And I'm going to just try rotating X here. It looks like X is what I want. And that's just going to rotate a little ways there. About right there. 
And then I'm going to move my scrub key again a little more, maybe two more frames. And now it's going to move back to its original position. So watch this. I've got a trick I want to show you. I can do it here holding down control. Or I can go to the motion lab. And if you look at this maraca here, if you click on it in the motion lab, you'll see I have rotation keyframes I created here. To put it back to its original position, I'll go to this first notch here that's white. And when the, my cursor turns into two arrows... I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to left click the mouse button, hold it down and copy that keyframe to this position. So what I did was I just, I went to this first notch here on the rotation under Maraca, held down control and left click the mouse button and dragged over and I created a duplicate of the original keyframe. So watch now it's back in its original position. So if you watch this, Let's just scrub through it slowly. You see it move there, and then it goes back to its original position. Let's do that again. Boom, it starts moving there, and then it goes back to its original position. That, again, is a great trick to do, is to go in the motion lab, which is on the lower right-hand corner, next to the arrow where you turned on auto key. Click on the motion lab. Then what you do is you click your uh, object, the word of your object, and then you have your keyframes underneath. Go to that keyframe, the first one, hold down control, left click and hold the mouse button down and drag it to your position. You've successfully duplicated that keyframe. Okay, so now next we're going to move the second maraca. So I'm going to hold down control for another pass here of our timeline. And now I'm going to go to a top view to do this one. So I'm going to click on my views, do from top. And again, this one is probably, uh, we're in object space, so that's good. So I'm probably going to be working with that keyframe again. And let's zoom in just so you can see this a little better. All right, and uh, so now we're going to go back to the beginning of our timeline. Now that the second maraca is selected, we're going to go down to the lower right hand corner, click add keyframe, plus sign. Now we're going to drag our scrub key all the way to the point just before the first maraca hits it. So about right there, we're going to click plus sign again. Again, the reason being is so from the beginning to the end here, or to the point where the maraca hits it, we're going to stay in that position. Okay, now that the first Maroc is hitting it, I'm going to move the scrub key over two or three frames. And now I'm going to rotate this Maroc. So I'm going to hold down control and rotate it on the Z axis, it looks like. Okay, so that's done. And now I want to bring, rotate it back to its original position. So two frames later, I'm going to go to my motion lab in the lower right hand corner. Click on Maraca 2, look at my rotations here, and I'm going to grab the first keyframe I created in its original position, hold down control, left click and hold the mouse button down, and just drag the mouse to your timeline scrub key right there, and now I've successfully duplicated the original position keyframe. So let's go back here and scrub through it. Be careful, please be careful not to click on your frames down here in the bottom of the timeline. If you do, you will turn off some of your keyframes. So when you're clicking your scrub key here, be careful not to click any of these frames. It'll drive you crazy if you can't figure out why your timeline isn't playing right. It's most likely because you turned off some of these frames down below. To turn these back on, of course, you would just click to the at the end keyframe until they all light up green again. Okay, so let's take a look here now. Let's scrub back here and look at that maraca. So we're go here comes the block. It's hitting the first maraca, hitting the second, and then it goes back to its original position along with the other one. Okay, so those are done. Now we're going to go on to this toy here. And again, if I can't select it because of the toy box, hold down control. I call this axle. And we're just going to rotate axle now on the y-axis, it looks like. And um, again, so we start it. Make sure your scrub key is at the beginning of your timeline down here. 
And it looks like we already have a keyframe on this, so. Um, but if you're not sure, just click plus add keyframe. Scrub through. We're going to keep this in a stationary position until about right there. Okay. So hit the plus sign again to add another keyframe. And the, again, you'll know that it's working when the key turns golden. And now move my scrub key over a frame or two. And this thing now is going to rotate. Let's see if I can get that Y here like I had it before. It's not letting me. If I have trouble getting, again, if you have trouble getting your uh, Y frame here, you can either zoom in on it or you can go up here on Y and just pick the right way it needs to rotate. So it's going to rotate about there. Okay, and I just did that from the Y rotation tool up up top screen. And then again, two frames later, it's going to return to its original position. So I'm going to go to my Motion Lab. Click on Axle. Grab my initial rotation. Remember, we're doing rotation, not position. Hold down Control and left click the mouse button and drag there and... There we go. We're at our original position again. Okay, and you can see that if I go back in the timeline here, you can see that it's there. Now it moves and it goes back. So by the time it returns here, the ball will start moving. So let's go to the ball. I'm going to hold down Control, click. The ball is my object. Hit Rewind on the timeline. Remember, I want to start at the beginning. Hit the plus sign here. And let's... Keep the ball in the original position till about right there. So click plus sign again to make sure it maintains that position from the beginning of the timeline to here. And then when the axle starts to go backwards, the ball is moving forward. And that's going to go this way. To hit this toy here, maybe about right there. And then a couple of frames later... It's going to go, let's say it kind of bounces off and goes to the side of the toy box. And we'll just kind of stretch the truth here and then we'll have it slowly go back to its original position. Let me, let me uh, leave that there and we'll go to the motion lab and do it that way. So ball. Um... Let's do this. Let's get out of here for a second. I think I, I created a keyframe there. So now I want to move this. I forgot to move the scrub key, right? So I want to move that a few frames down here, then go to the motion lab. Grab my ori original rotation. And if I can't see it here, that means I got to grab my scrub key up here on the timeline and drag that back to the beginning and just do it this way. So now I'm going to go up here, hold down control. Oops, left click the mouse button and drag that keyframe past the other one about two or three frames. And now the ball is back in the original position. Okay, using my scrub key, if I scrub through this, you can see there it's hitting the toy and it's going there and then back, back to this position here. And there's a little delay there. So I want to get rid of that. Um, so I'm going to go back here one frame at a time and delete. So remember you go to the frame and when this turns golden, if I click minus, that means I've gotten rid of one of the keyframes. I might have to do it, do this whole thing again. And it looks like I successfully deleted the extra keyframe that I didn't want. So that's perfect. All right, so that's going back to its original. Uh, so we're done with that one. And here I'm gonna click on this tool here, which is probably the baby wheels, we'll call that. Okay, plus sign to start it. Grab your scrub key. And that's going to stay in that position till about right here. Okay, and then once it's here, let's so click plus again. Now grab your scrub key and move that over a few frames. And now we're going to rotate this thing. Probably on Y again, so I'm going to go up here on Y. And Y is not the axis on this one. Interesting. So maybe Z. Let's try a Z. Nope. Control Z. And let's try X. There it is. On X. So it's going to hit that. 
Then a few frames later, it's going back to its original position. And that was uh, Z, I think, folks, or X, sorry, X. Okay. Undo that. And we're going to, again, we're going to go to the Motion Lab. I forgot to do that. So I'm going to move this over three or four frames. Grab my initial rotation key. Go back onto the scrub key. Hold down Control. Drag that over a few frames and we're done. Okay. All right. So again, scrubbing through it. Boom, 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 and it goes should go back. And again, I have another delay there. So it looks like I'm going to have to delete a keyframe here somewhere once it hits about right there. And it looks like I got rid of it. So perfect. Okay. All right. So this, I noticed that it's not really hitting this, so I'm going to move this a little closer to the... Um, Let's save it too before we forget. So file, save. Not save as, sorry. I want to do a file, save. I guess it's already saved, so we're good there. Um, let's play it though and watch it. Okay, hit play and you can see that it's all working out pretty well there. The other thing you can do with your timeline, I forgot to show you this, so I want to go up here. If you go to file, animation setup, you can choose, instead of playing it once, you can tell it to repeat. And repeat will play it over and over again. Okay? So if I hit play here, watch. It'll just recycle and start at the beginning. There it goes. It keeps going there. So now that I've made that change, let's go ahead and save it in case we get a crash. All right? So this top now is the last object that we're going to move so I'm going to click on there and it's called the spin top and I need to since again we're on uh, I'm going to take off the keyframe on there since we're here at uh, the first frame let's move this over so we're guaranteed that this baby wheel is going to hit it so when it comes time to hit it you'll see there it's pretty much touching it okay now I'll click a keyframe to keep it in that position plus Again, leave it in the position till about right there. Hit plus again. And now move it over maybe two, two or three frames. Let's do two at a time. This thing is going to kind of do a circular pattern here. One, two again. Okay, and let's zoom out so we can see it a little better. Okay, and then two more frames, and we're going to move it. We're going to have it do like a little circle. One, two. And then at the end, by the time it gets to almost the very last frame, it'll go back to the original position. So I'm going to click there on the spin top. And again, just at 20, it looks like 29 frames, I'm going to put the original initial keyframe there. This time, though, we're doing position. We didn't rotate it, right? We just moved the object. So I'm grabbing the position keyframe, holding down control, and dragging it to frame 29. So again, I used position rather than rotate because all I did was move the object. Okay, let's save it so we don't forget. Hit play. And there you can see that everything's doing its uh, motion there. This is a little slow, so I may do some adjustments here at the end. The last thing I want to do at the top, and as a matter of fact, is I want to have it do one full rotation. Okay, so I'm going to just do this manually. I'm going to, again, click the plus sign. Okay, have this uh, stay in that position till right here again. Don't forget. So plus again. And now, as this thing moves, it's going to do a rotation. So again, I believe I'm on my Z-axis here. Yeah, so there, there's the beginning of it. By the time it gets here, we'll have it rotate a little bit more. Okay. 
like so. A little bit more here. Okay, and then two more right there. Let's do a little more here. Oops, not X. My bad. Control Z if you make a mistake here. Oops, we're going to go this way. And then by the time it gets to the end, watch this, we'll go into the motion lab. And we're going to grab, remember, the original keyframe. So at about 30, or is it more than that? About 31, let's say, we'll bring the original rotation frame around. So hold down control. Again, I'm on rotation. Left click the mouse button, bring that to the end. And I believe that's perfect. Then we'll be back at the original position. Okay. So scrubbing it at the end, you'll see we've done a full circle there. And again, I if it's not moving in the way you want, feel free to move your uh, keyframes. This one probably should come out here a little more. This one may be out here. You know, you can space them out a little bit more, or you can bring them together, too. You know, these you can bring in as make a tighter pattern if you want. That might be the better way to go. Like so. Especially if you want the past to look convincing. So we'll probably want to bring it out more out here. That looks pretty good. So here, let's try it. Okay, and then, yeah, that moves a little bit better. I like that. Okay, so the last thing you might want to consider is the speed of objects, the speed that your objects are moving. I noticed here that Baby Wheels is moving a little bit slow. So I may scrub to that part where it starts motion right there. Go to my motion lab and look at my keyframes, okay? My rotation keyframes, as a matter of fact. From there to there is when the baby wheels start rotating. So I may want to move these a little closer together. And what that's going to do is speed it up. Then grab my end one. Have that one, have it finish earlier. Okay. So you, you should see a significant speed up of the motion here. Just by moving the keyframes in the motion lab. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, that's a little better. Now I notice again, there's a delay with the spin top here. And so I've got to figure out what's going on with that. You see how it delayed right there? So this thing should start moving right there. So I need to click on the top here and move my first keyframe to that point. So go to the motion lab and notice here the position keyframe is not where it needs to be. So I'm going to move all of these over by two keyframes. So again, this is a great benefit to have this motion lab because you can adjust your keyframes in here along a graph. And again, the closer they are together, generally the faster they're going to move. So now when I watch this, the top should start moving as soon as it needs to. And that was even that was a little better. It's still it's still delayed there. So I'm going to go back here. It should move by that frame right there. So I'm going to click on my motion lab. And again, position frame. I'm going to try moving that back one just to see if that works. So move all these back one. Check. Okay, and let's see what we got. Okay, and it looks like it's moving a little better. Now notice there our rotations are all screwed up. Okay, so what I might have to do there is get rid of my rotations if possible and fix that. Now let's say, you know what, this thing is not working. I'm having trouble with this. No problem. You can go into your motion lab on your spin top. Go right on the word spin top, hold down shift, 
and click delete all keyframes. And what that'll do is that'll start you back from scratch. Pain in the neck, but it, sometimes it's necessary. So I'm going to do this again and see if I can get it right. I'm going to hit the plus sign to start the spin top. Bring this over, and again, it should be still to about that point. Hit plus sign again. And now the top's going to hit it and start moving away. That's when my that's when this should start moving. So again, I'm going to grab this, move it up. A couple more frames over, move it again. Maybe out this way a little bit more. A couple of frames later, we're going here. A couple frames after that. We're right here, let's say. And then two more, and we're basically back to where we started. So let me grab this, and at about 24, we're going to grab the original position keyframe. Remember, I didn't rotate it. I moved the whole object. So hold down Control. We'll go to frame 24, and that should complete our circle there. Let's at least look at the timing here and see how we're doing. Okay, timing's much better, so I like that. I'm glad I decided to redo it. So now what I need to do is, well, let's save it first. Now what I need to do is do my rotation, see if I can get this right. So from here to here, we're staying uh, stationary. Plus sign. By the time we get here, we've, we're going to have rotated, what, a quarter turn? On, I believe it was X or Z sorry yeah Z so we're gonna be about right there maybe okay and by the time we get to here oops control Z will undo it and we're gonna be about there Okay, and then a couple more. By the time we're there, we're going, I think we're on Z, if I'm not mistaken. Go back here a little bit. Okay, there. And then by the time we get there, we're going to be about right there. Two more, of course, and we're going to be... there and then by the time we get to the end of course we're going to go to our rotation frame there hold down control and we should be back to our original position so let's watch it now and see if the timing is right much better okay now the last thing I need to do is just to make sure all the speeds are correct. I think the ball is a little slow, so I'm going to speed that up. Hold down control. Choose the ball. Again, scrub through. So by the time this thing hits the ball, we're in motion right there. So I'm going to go to the uh, motion lab. Again, look at my position. This is where we're going to uh, adjust our movements. So from here to here, we got a kind of a slow movement. So I'm going to take this keyframe, move it over at least one. Uh, actually, probably not that keyframe. Let's do that again. I might have moved my initial movement, and I don't want to do that. So let's take a look and make sure we're in the right spot here still. Okay, we're still good there. So. Looks like that's the keyframe, these two. So I want to go now and look and see where that, aha, this one here. So I didn't want to mess with this one. I messed with this one here. And again, I'm just going to move these over one or two. Maybe one on that one. And let's check the speed again. Okay. That's a lot better. So you can see how... Using the Motion Lab can help you also adjust the speeds of your objects. 
Um, let's look at it one more time. Don't forget to save it as well. And you can see there we've got a nice pattern going. And everything's moving the way it should. And then we've got a nice loop here. Okay, and it looks like our timeline's a little long here. So we'll check this out. I can bring this out to here. And see all this, all these frames that aren't being used? I could shorten this up simply by going back here. And look at the last motion. Maybe right there. At that frame. And now I can make my end time 205, 2 seconds, 5 frames. So now if I go up to File, Animation Setup, instead of 3 seconds, I can change my duration to 2 seconds, 5 frames right here. And that'll just be a nice smooth loop. So I changed from 3 seconds to 205 here. And now let's watch it in a shortened version and you should see a smooth loop. Okay, perfect. So that's what you're going for when you when you highlight or animate multiple objects. It's called multiple pass animation. You go through the timeline several times and manipulate different objects. So when you hit play at the end, it makes it look like the motion's happening simultaneously. So the final thing you'll do before you turn your project in is of course get it to an angle that you want. I'm gonna go back to director's view and we're gonna watch it from this angle. And I'm gonna render it out at half the um, ratio of render resolution. So I'm gonna to go to document setup and do one to 50 here so I can speed this up so you can see it. Okay, You're, you should render it out at one to one resolution. I'm just gonna do this to speed the process up. And now what I wanna do, let me save it here is render out my final video. So I'm going to go up to File, Render Animation. Here I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to do entire duration. It's going to be two seconds, five frames long. But down here where it says Output Module, you do want to add a compressor to it. Don't do it uncompressed because it'll be hard to play. It'll be harder for me to watch. So click here and just choose Cinepak or uh, Microsoft is a good one. Microsoft MPEG-4 video codec would be fine. So I'm going to choose the MPEG-4 video codec. Okay, click OK. And let's see if I can change the quality. It doesn't look like I can change the compression quality there. But if uh, some of these you can, I believe. Let's try Cinepak. Cinepak, I can go up now and change the compression quality to, let's do 99%. Click OK. So we'll try Cinepak. Um, and then down here where it says uh, set, that's where we tell where we're going to save it. So this would be uh, whatever number project you're on. Let's say this is project 12, my last name, 12 dash my last name. It's going to save it out as an AVI movie, and I'll just save it to the desktop at this point. Click save. And then now the last thing to do is hit the check mark, and you'll see now it's rendering out each frame here. And you can see the block moving there frame by frame. And you'll see all the action here as soon as it's done. And notice here when I render it out at 50% quality, it's going much faster than it would be at a one-to-one. -one. So we're already at frame 11 here. So this should be done in just a minute or so. So there should be a 11 dash acker on here somewhere, and I'm not seeing it. Let's go, oh here, 12, sorry, I, I am just an idiot today. <laughs> Here's 12 dash agar, this is the one you want. Let's just try to play it with the, uh, a bitmap's a still file, so I'm not really going to, uh, and again, it's not playing that Microsoft video, so let's just try using Windows Media Player again. So open with Windows Media Player, and that should go ahead and play it here. Thankfully, we finally got it. Now you can see how badly compressed it is. So you're definitely going to want to render it out at a one-to-one -one resolution. But you can see there it's following a nice smooth loop. And um, that's kind of what you want it to do. So when I, when I turn on the looping function in Media Player, I should be able to see a nice smooth loop 
where it just keeps cycling back to your um, your uh, animation like a smooth loop. 